Hi Floss Tube, it is Helen D. Today is Tuesday, I don't even know. The 16th, and it's not Tuesday, it's Monday. It's Monday, <laughs> October 16th. I'm here to talk to you all about the Stitch New England Retreat. Clearly, I still need a little more catch up sleep. <laughs> I made myself a cup of coffee. I thought we could just chat while things are fresh in my mind. Also, that I have so many things I need to put them away. <laughs> um, they would drive me crazy just waiting until next week. So I thought I'll just make myself a cup of coffee and we will talk all things Stitch New England retreat. It was this past weekend. The retreat is put on by Pam and Kevin who own Stitch New England. Pam is stitching in the land of good enough on floss tube. Um, Stitch New England the shop is in North Andover. North, North Attleboro, Massachusetts. The retreat was in Mansfield, which is just like the next town up. So it was a large retreat, 300 people, 300-ish. It was 280 something, I think, the final people that were able to make it. A few people had to cancel last minute. Um, I know going into it, I was personally very nervous because it was such a large retreat. And my friend Cheryl, who has been to some large retreats, said, you'll be fine. It's fine, you won't even notice. Cheryl was right as usual. <laughs> um, it was great. We had such a good time. It did not feel like 300 people. Part of that might have been too that we were sitting kind of on one of the ends and I was kind of where my seat was, I was back too. So it kind of, my focus was like, I don't know, 10 tables, <laughs> not the rest of the tables. Um, I wasn't overwhelmed at all. Everyone there was so nice. Everyone was having a good time, laughing, ringing the bell. So some people were actually stitching, <laughs> uh, shopping. We had a great time. Now, I was one of the committee members. Pam's been planning this retreat for more than a year. And last year, around this time, I don't even remember, she reached out to me and she asked if I would be willing to design something to go in the goodie bag. I said, yes, absolutely. So then she asked, well, do you want to be on the committee? Sure, why not? I was planning on going. So I was on the committee. So we kind of met throughout the year, once a month, sometimes once every two weeks, you know, whatever was needed to do some of the planning and help Pam and Kevin with the planning. And then on retreat weekend, we all had our orange shirts on, which in person were more of a Tic Tac orange than a, a fall Tic Tac orange than a hunter orange. Um, so we helped set things up, run the shops, man the shops, do all the running to look for things, whatever they needed, we did. Um, so that meant for us, it was a very, it was a working weekend, but we're working with our friends. <laughs> so it was still fun, even though we were super busy. So the committee, the other committee members was myself, Lynette, homesteading on the home front, Amy, Gable Stitcher. Don Marie and Anna from Don, uh, DM's Crafty Vortex, my friend Ellen and her husband Shep, Tracy, OG Stitchery, our friend Kristen, and then Pam's mom and dad and her kids were there too. So everyone was busy. <laughs> we were busy. Um, I got barely any stitching in, but I did stitch. I did not ring the bell. <laughs> Absolutely not. So we had a really, really good time. Stayed up way too late. Didn't sleep great crashed last night. Actually, I stayed with my, I stayed in the room with my sister Donna and Sunday morning checkout was at 11. So I said, how about I set the alarm for eight? Slept right through that alarm. Woke up at 845. <laughs> we had plenty of time. We weren't worried, but <clears throat> it was, um, we needed a little extra sleep. So I'm going to go over. This was just a stitching retreat, right? There were no classes so it was stitching there was some shopping areas pam's store was open uh, she had a shuttle running on saturday back and forth from the shop um but there was no classes and stuff there was a brag table i didn't get any i looked at it it was gorgeous i forgot to take a picture there was smalls exchanges um those were set out again i forgot to take a picture but a lot of people did and they've been using um hashtag stitch new england retreat on Instagram, not that you can really look at Instagram hashtags, 
properly anymore. So those pictures are out there. I did take quite a few pictures actually, so I've been posting those on my uh, Instagram, which is the East Coast Period Crafter. I probably won't insert because my editing, that, that'll add like hours to my day, and I don't know if I have the mental capacity <laughs> to do that today, but they are out there. Um, a lot of people posted on Instagram, so those are out there. Um, Pam put together a really good goodie bag for us, so I'll start with that and then show um, it's like some little gifties, and then there were purchases made. So I have purchases to show. I think that's it. I think that's the order with which we were go. If I forgot, to, if I forget something or to say your name, there was there was a lot of people there. Last night I couldn't even remember where the extra toothpaste was. So keep that in mind. <laughs> um, there were a bunch of floss tubers there, which I'll mention now because I wrote kind of wrote down the ones I remembered again. I know, I know I forgot someone. It really surprised me how many people came to this treat, retreat from far away. California, Oregon, Tennessee, the Carolinas, like people flew, <laughs> Canada, they flew in. Personally, I'm a drive to a retreat kind of girl. So the thought of like trying to condense my stuff enough to fly in, that would be work all in itself. So that really surprised me how many people fly in. And I know they do for other retreats as well, but a lot of the ones that I've been to personally have been smaller and they've been more regional so people can drive there. I don't know if we've had anyone fly into them. So that was really cool. So I went down, I drove down with my friends, Cheryl and Tina. Donna had to come late because of a soccer game. And then she came down and I drove home with her. So I didn't have to drive, I stitched in the car. I got more stitching done in the car than I did at the retreat. It was about three hours, three hours-ish from my house. Um, <clears throat> Missy and Kathy from Two Needles Pulling Thread were there. Emma and Brandy of B&E Stitchery. They all kind of, we were all in one little area along with Chris and Jane, the boss stitchers. Um, so we kind of were all in one little section. We all happened to sit. They sat together. I was working that morning. so. They saved me a seat. <laughs> Emma saved me a seat at her table. Uh, Memphis Sarah E. came from Tennessee. Athena, Stitching Goddess Designs was there. Uh, Susan, Criminally Creative. Stacy from Thread the Needle. Um, Two Martini Stitcher, Erin was there. I was like, what? That was, I didn't know she was coming, so that was fun. Um, Teresa, Garden Goose Stitcher, she sat um, over at Missy's table, and ooh, shoot, shoot, shoot. Lisa and Megan, and I just, I had it, and then a dog walked by, and I forgot the name of your channel. Hmm, is it Sassy Southern Stitchers? I'm gonna link them below. They were so sweet. They were sitting with Missy as well. Um, so it was great to see them and meet them, and I'll link it below. I may have that name wrong. So. Everyone was just really, really, really nice. Um, let's go through the goodie bag. So we got this tote bag. The colors were blue and orange, thus our orange shirts. So we got a Stitch New England Retreat tote bag to put all your purchases in. I would have needed a larger bag. <laughs> and they put together a list of like you know, your welcome packet with the hotel information and places to eat and some other just kind of information. So that was in there. Um, Tracy from OG Stitchery. She made 300 of these. 300 handmade orange button scissor fobs for us. She probably never wants to see another orange button for a long, long time. <laughs> they gave us a really cool sticker, Wicked Awesome Stitching Weekend. That was kind of our kind of our theme, as you'll see. A Stitch New England paper and little pen so you could write things down. Um, and then I'm trying, I think, I think that was it. And then there were two charts. 
I don't have one of them because <laughs> they ran out and it was mine so I didn't need it. The other one that they did, which again, they put together, they put together a kit. And my bag had my name on it because I only got the bag. Because <laughs> I didn't need the kit because it was the little piece that I made and I'd already done it. So in the kit was this little chart. This is what we came up with for our exclusive Stitch New England piece. So it's a corner gauge and the chart to make this wicked awesome stitching pocket to keep your corner gauge in. So they kitted it up, they used 14 count Ada so that it would come out to the right size, they put the floss in, uh, there, there's a needle in there, um, and the corner gauge in this chart. This is the coolest little chart of mine I've ever, like the printing, it was like so cool to see it. So here it is. Oh, and the fabrics, the backing fabrics. So here's the corner gauge. So this, you know, so you can mark your corner if you want to go in with a one inch, two inch, or three inch margin. And then all the stuff to make a little pocket. So this little chart is exclusive. It was exclusive to the retreat, though I did put out for them, part of the deal was we would come up with something and then if it required finishing, I would put out a finishing video, which I did at the retreat because um, I recorded it early so I'd have this done and then I just published it while I was there. So you can just, it's meant to be tight so they don't fall out. Um, blue and orange, blue and orange. So that one was in there as well. And then I've been holding out on you guys because it's been really hard not to talk about this one. When we were talking about what to do and what to do, you know, what kind of things she was looking for. Before we kind of talked about exactly what she wanted, I just started kind of some doodling. My, first of all, I am not an artist and my doodling is terrible. I see things in stitching squares, but my drawing abilities are non-existent. So I kind of had come up with a couple things. And then when we were talking about doing the corner gauge pocket, I said, okay, that's great. I've already also come up with this idea. Do you want both? And Pam's like, yes, yes, I would like both. So I said, all right. So I'm going to do this other one, but then this other one I am going to release as a chart for sale. So this one will be coming out along with a companion piece that I will show you. Um, they'll be on Cobweb Corner whenever Carla's back from farming. <laughs> so the one that I came up with I called Mushroom Mayhem, and I really, really wanted to design a berry. My coffee's in the way. So this was the little berry that I came up with. So it's a little skunk on his tree stump with all his mushrooms that go up the side. And I did a, just kind of a simple top treatment. So this is the berry. And then I thought, well, not everyone's into berries. What if I tweak it a little? Same basic design, just kind of tweaked a little to make a stand up. So that's what I did. So this is the Mushroom Mayhem stand up. And this one is stitched on a 25 count. I'll talk about these more in detail on my next floss too, but this one I stitched with the DMC, all DMC. And then this one I did use a couple of fancy floss so that in person you could kind of see the difference. They're a little hard to see on the picture. Um, you know, with the DMC, this DMC is very variegated, so this was the closest I could come up with, and it's obviously matching the dark color in this stump and not the light color. So that was Mushroom Mayhem. And then I'll give you a sneak peek. Again, I'll talk about these more in a regular floss tube. The other companion piece that I did is called Acorn Abundance, I think. And it is a squirrel gathering his little acorns. Same thing, he's got his little acorns. And it's a gray squirrel because that's what we have here. He started out as a chipmunk, and then he morphed into a squirrel. So that is acorn abundance. So again, I will talk about those more 
on a regular floss tube. So that is what was in our goodie bag. Um, I also did take part in the Smalls Exchange and what I ended up giving is something you've already seen. Um, I made for one of my exchanges, I had two retreats coming this winter, this fall, but I did have to cancel one. But one of the things I made was the, um, the drum I used for the drum tutorial with the cardinal in the wreath, wreath, which was a Bent Creek heart and hand friend stitch piece and I made it into the little drum. So that's what I used as my swap gift. And then this is the one I got and I don't know who made it. I wasn't able to figure out who made it. So I need to post on the Facebook page and see because I'm 99% I'm sure this is a Blackbird. I love the browns. It's such a sweet finish. It's got a little counting pin, you know, a horizontal bow with a little like berry in it. It's really, really cute. I love it. So I need to figure out who made that so that I can thank them properly. Uh, so that's what I did for the Smalls Exchange. Um, one thing that, like I said, this one, um, sometimes you go to the big retreats and there's a lot of people that go around and pass out floss drops and floss bling and just different things, like little different gifts right for ev for everyone and that's 300 that's a lot um <coughs> there there was definitely and i have a few of those there definitely was that but what i thought this one people seem to do instead was just to do something for your table um and that's what i did there were six people at a table so i put together i bought five um autumn themed mugs and i put some autumn colored flosses in them and some candy and some 2024 charms and I think that was it and then so my table it was myself Donna Emma Stephanie Laura and Karen and Laura at one point was working on a piece and she realized she was missing a thread a whole a thread color and she's like ah oh, I didn't no one on the table had it and then Karen said check your mug the, the color she needed was in her mug I said, well, how funny is it that, I mean, I randomly grabbed fall colors. They were different. Everyone's mug was different. Not only did I happen to have that color, it happened to be in her mug. So that was nice. It was convenient. She was able to just use it. So this is kind of what the table, the table folks, um, Emma made, and some of the things that would show up on my table, I, I don't know who they were from because I, I wasn't at my table a lot. Emma made us these cute little thread beds because she's, you know, a master with her sewing machine now. She's, she's learning how to use it. So these are really, really cute. I love the ghosts. I think there's a little magnet in here so you can put a needle or whatever. Um, Emma, I'm impressed that you can do the snaps. I don't know if I've ever tried the snaps. So that came from Emma. And then Karen made these really sweet little pouches with a couple of threads in them. Um, she had a few to choose from and I chose the garden themed. So that was really cute. Um, and then Stephanie made us all, Stephanie spoiled us. She made us all these project keepers and they have like New England fabrics on them, right at Massachusetts loons, the leaves, all the fun, the, lo the dead lobsters. Um, so it's these really, really cute project folders. I've never had one of these. It's, I can't wait to use it. And she had these needle, she made these needle minders. So they say Stitch New England Retreat 2023. So that was really, really nice of her. Um, I might have to put my new start in this. I might have to transfer it over. It's currently in a bag. And it's a pitiful new start. So let me just put that out there right now. So that's kind of what we did at our table. And then, like I said, there was there were a lot of, um, you know, needle books and some different needle minders and floss drops and bling and stuff like that. So I have some of those. I won't go through all of those, but I did get a couple of um, really sweet things I wanted to show. Um, Lynn stopped by and she gave me this little bag of goodies. 
Okay, little bag of goodies right in one of those little organza bags. She stitched on the bag. <laughs> so it says Stitch Witch on the organza bag. I can't imagine. So that one. And then Stephanie made little pouches with some goodies in it. This is the one that I got with the hearts. Um, Missy and Kathy of Two Needles Pulling Thread had had some needle minders made. So I have a Two Needles Pulling Thread needle minder. And then a couple of people, uh, my friend Brandy, uh, she gave me a LaHaye box. One of the shaker boxes. It smells fantastic. I can't wait to figure out what to finish on it. And I'm going to do, I think it was Missy on hers. She didn't want to ruin the box. <laughs> so she finished, she found a piece, stitched it. She used really, really strong magnets behind the box so that she could like put her washer on the back of her piece, or she might've actually used two magnets and then magneted it through the box so that then you could take it off and swap it out or leave it on, but you weren't, you weren't gluing to your special box. <laughs> so once I figure out what I'm going to put on this, um, that's what I'll be doing too. My friend Kat stitched me, I stitched past my bedtime in this squishy pillow. She used um, poly pellets. I love the, probably can't see because of the light, but it's got like the, um, stitching fabric and I do stitch past my bedtime <sighs> and then Tina came around um, and she had made me some pillow she says she loves to make pillowcases they call her the pillowcase fairy she had made me some pillowcases and they're really cute winter pillowcases I told her that um, the cat hair is gonna look real good on these <laughs> So that's kind of, oh, Memphis Sarah E. had made scissor fobs. That's a lot of work. So those are kind of the goodies, the goodies. Let me, let me just scoot these in my basket so that they're moved out. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Want to see the two tiny things I stitched? That'll kill 30 seconds. I worked on... In my last video, I'm like, I'm going to fill in. I'm going to outline so I can fill in. This is going to be great. I knew full well I would not get much stitching done. It's going to be busy, and I talk too much. So <laughs> it is what it is. But I did bring flying lessons from Silver Creek. I had outlined the moon was ready to be filled in and the hat. They still are. I got, I think I got all that white in and some of this black. That was basically the extent of my stitching, except Saturday night after the raffles, um, we had put together some raffle baskets, so we did the raffles. I knew I wanted a new start. I knew what it was going to be. I bought the charts. This is a little preview of what I purchased. Um, I wanted to start to say that I had started it. This chart from Petal Pusher called Troublemakers. So I picked this up in the little shopping room and just to say I started it, I forced myself to stitch one pumpkin. This is charted all in DMC, but I have pulled some fancy floss that is really close. I, Barbie had sent me the floss list before I left so that I could pull all my DMC and then I took those DMC to my, I think this is a coloring cotton. So I have not even a whole pumpkin, because I didn't do the insides, but I got that much of a pumpkin done. And then I did, while we're looking at that, this is the one I think I'm gonna put in Stephanie's folder. Um, the Hoop and Bobbin, which was Scarlet Sky Stitchery, they've kind of rebranded to the Hoop and Bobbin. They were there with a the trunk show, and they're the ones that make the boards. Um, I don't know if these are going to be on their website, but you could reach out and I will try and remember to link that below. So I did pick up one of the boards. I don't know if I'll use it for this, but I'll use it for something and I was there and it was there and now it's here. So I picked up the board. 
Um, purchases. We'll see some purchases. Oh, wait. I had one more gift. It was just down here. So when Pam announced the retreat, she did a giveaway on her channel for... Um, she was giving away a spot at the retreat. And this sweet, 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 sweet woman named Pam from California won and came to the retreat from California. And she reached out to me and she had stitched a piece as a thank you for Pam of Stitch New England. And she wanted to know if there's any way that I would finish it for her. So I did, I finished it as a little stand up, brought it with me and then she could give it to Pam. And then California Pam gave me this giant thank you, which was unnecessary. Things are always unnecessary, right? Stitchers are just generous. So it's in this bag with Buzz that's full of things. And I'm just gonna show you a couple things that I know she made. Um, she didn't make these, but I broke into these last night. I'd never had C's candies. I'm not sharing these, these were good. So like I said, all kinds of things, but I know that Pam crocheted this little, I should have taken it out. It's a tomato pin cushion with a strawberry. <laughs> and this curly, bumpy pumpkin. How cute is this? This is gonna go right out with my fall things. So thank you, Pam. It was so nice to meet her. Um, I know she had a really good time. It was her first retreat and she really, really enjoyed herself. So that was great. You know, you're flying all that way. <laughs> you want to enjoy yourself. So, I will slide over purchases. First thing actually was also a gift, and this was Pam gave everyone on the committee a, they had some tumblers, Stitch New England tumblers. I think you could put your sticker on here, which probably everyone did, so now we'll never be able to tell whose is whose. So there were multiple trunk shows, I think, 15, 17, there was a lot of trunk shows. She had a couple of fabric dyers. Like I said, um, the Hoop and Bobbin was there with some wood pieces. They had some project bags. There was a lot of stuff. So I tried to be good, but there was some shopping. I'm sure I spent more than some, less than others. That's how it goes. Uh, one of the days there, I worked at the shop. So I did also pick up a couple of these things at the shop. At the shop, I got these adorable little scissors. I love these little inexpensive scissors. I love, and these have ghosts on them. I waited. I was there all day. I waited until about 3.45. The shop closes at four. In the last, you know, we were done. People were done. And then I'm like, okay, good. There's still a pair of those scissors left. I want those. Okay, good. This is still here. I want that. <laughs> um, I needed a skein of shabby sheep. This is my two flosses. And then um, when Ashley, Kathy's daughter, was there shopping, she picked up this purple, and I'd never seen it before, and I knew I didn't have it. So I, it was really pretty. It's Orla's Iris. It's really, it's a pretty shade. And then I got a chart there, which is probably mixed in. Oh, this Bernie Jubé. Someone on Instagram, and I don't know who, did this as a drum. They stitched all three pieces together and finished it as a drum, and it was really cute. So I picked up that. And then in the shopping annexes, um, I picked up three charts, Barbie's chart, the wood piece, heart and hand had a trunk show there. So I got thankful doodles. I'd really like to do this doodles series next year. I have most of them. So I got thankful. Look at that turkey. Um, and then counting puddles was there. And I've seen some of her charts. She's kind of a newer designer. I've seen some of her charts at Expo. She had a couple in just cross stitch. She sent her models and they're so fun and colorful that I had to get this one. It's called Watermelon Crawl. That's what her charts look like. And they are like full color, heavy duty. They're really nice. So it's just so cute. And I love this watermelon that you can kind of see the slices, like she has them in different shades of pink. It was really, really graphic and cute and different. And she had some other ones that just in person looked really nice. And from the perspective of someone who helped set up and take down the trunk shows, her packaging was amazing. Everything had its own like sewn pouch you put it in. 
so easy, so well labeled. I was like, oh, I really lucked out getting to pack hers up because it was easy. I got one piece of fabric. Um, I bought this for specifically thinking I would do Tonight We Ride by Autumn Lane Stitchery, which was a piece from their box last year. Um, then I got their box from this year and I think it's gonna be used for something else. <laughs> uh, so it's called Pumpkin King. And it's oranges, ruddy oranges, and like blacks, dark grays. So that was my one piece of fabric. It's a fat quarter of 14 count, Ada, Atomic Ranch. And then um, Lumi and Pie is a bag maker and she had brought some bags and they're gorgeous. I know I make my own bags. I don't necessarily enjoy making my own bags and these ones were just so cool. So I told myself, you know what? A lot of people go to a retreat and they will pick out a project and kit it up and that will be like their retreat project. Instead, I'm going to buy myself a retreat bag. So this will be my Stitch New England bag. And then I bought two <laughs> because. So here's her card. Lumi and Pie. So this one is tomato pin cushions. She has like a you can you can write your project information. <laughs> that that little tidbit of knowledge is with wherever my toothpaste is. <laughs> They're quilted. They're fluffy. I don't even know what she used on the inside. I typically use, oh look, she used the same fabric cat did on the back of my pillow. I usually use white on the inside because um, I just have a lot of it. This one was the first one I picked out and I had to have it. I had to have it. It's Halloween. It's fun colors. It's the kind with all the little patchworky. I'm not a quilter, so like this to me is beyond what I could do nicely. <laughs> I had to have this bag. And then wait till you see the back. So here's the front. She's a different color. Okay, back. Tis the season to be spooky. So isn't that fun? It's like a panel on the back. It's like two extra special things in one. <laughs> so this is my Stitch New England retreat bag. Um, that's it, my piles are empty. I think that's everything. Pam did announce they are doing it again next year. It will be in October, a different weekend. Hold please, I'll tell you the dates. Pam will have all this information coming out. Tickets won't be available for a while, um, but for your planning purposes, October 17th, 17, 18, 19. It's gonna start at like the afternoon on a Thursday. People were there on Thursday. This year we started on a Friday morning. People were there on Thursday. <laughs> Cause why wouldn't, we could have a week long retreat and people would be there. So Thursday, all day Friday, all day Saturday. And then it will end at like midnight on Saturday, um, which is when this one ended as well. So Pam will have all that information. Look for those ticket sales. I know, I didn't hear anyone who had a bad time. Everyone I heard was laughing and having a good time and ready to come back. We, we would go back this weekend. Pam, when do you want us? We're coming back. <laughs> so that was my little recap. Now I have all these goodies and things to put away, catch up on some sleep, um, maybe stitch. Yesterday I stitched in the car on the way home when Donna drove. I might have put one line of that hat in and, and that was it. And then last night I was too tired. And that's probably the least amount of stitching I've done on a day in a good long time. <laughs> Which says something, right? You go to a stitch retreat and I stitch more on a normal day than I did there. So thank you for listening to me babble. If you're worried about going to a large retreat like I was, don't be. There were tables full of people that had never been to a retreat before and by the end they were saying what a good time they had and what good friends they made. It was really, really fun. Pam, when they put a balloon on every table and then when your table was full, 
the volunteers were either going around collecting balloons or you took your balloon and we had like some side tables, a charging station, and we were just moving the balloons up there so that anyone coming in could see that see a balloon and know that there was a seat at that table. So if you were coming in by yourself and you were worried about where you were going to sit, you saw a balloon, you knew there was a seat there and you could go over and, can I have the seat? Yes, the answer was always yes. And everyone just had a really good time. Stitchers are so generous and so kind. We all like the same thing. <laughs> so we just had a good weekend. I'm gonna stop babbling. Have a great rest of your day and I will go start putting things away. Bye.